one heist, six plots for betrayal. When Raya Cautella cons five other thieves into helping her steal a magical artifact from the most powerful man in the world, she knows she's playing with fire. What she doesn't know is that the rest of her crew is just as underhanded as she is, and they all have plans of their own. MJ Kuhn's Among Thieves, a fantasy heist novel full of twists, turns, and betrayal, available beginning September 7th wherever books are sold. Visit mjkuhn.com for more details. On today's episode, Ryan shares his experience brewing The Dude, a coffee blonde ale inspired by his wife's favorite Starbucks recipe, Abide. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Brewers in Law podcast, where beer is thicker than water. Join us on a journey discovering home brewing, craft beer, and more. I'm Mike, and with me as always is my brother-in-law, Ryan. What's up, Ryan? Not much. What's going on? I am excited for this episode. You've uh, been very excited for this we episode. We will be we'll be discussing a beer recipe you wrote. This happens to be one of my favorite of your recipes, possibly my favorite. Um, and the inspiration, as we will discuss, comes from another non-beer food item. So you were inspired to make a beer that is reminiscent of some other food or drink that is not beer. So in the spirit of that, for today's first sip, I would like you to uh, tell me what the neatest beer is you've ever tried that was also inspired by some kind of non-beer food item. So I, I talked about this beer before because it's it's very unique. Um, it is the Neapolitan Nitro Stout from Saga Tuck Brewery, which is here based in Michigan. Oh, we tried that, didn't we? Yeah. Yes. It, it, you literally get all three flavors. And I don't know how they do it. It's, it's, it's inspiring. And like it, it, it's just, it blows your mind like how you get all three flavors. This isn't like the greatest beer in the world, but it just blows your mind getting all three of those flavors. Yeah. What about no, you? It's a nice beer. I like that beer a lot. So I will say I'm going to cheat and give like two quick answers, but okay. I, I tried... You know, like cereal beers. Have you heard of cereal beers? They're kind of becoming a thing where it's like people put Captain Crunch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen those. So I tried one at Coonan Brewing in Warren, Michigan, Mm -hmm. and uh, I would not want more than like three ounces of a beer like this (laughs) because it's very sweet. But holy crap, if it didn't taste just like the cereal it was based off of, I think it was maybe like I don't know. It might have been Captain Crunch actually, and it tasted exactly like it. So that was neat. But my the neatest beer I've ever tried, I'm realizing now, also a Kunin beer. Apparently, they're good at this. It was at a beer fest, and for, I don't know how widely Fago distributes, but it's a pop. It's Michigan. It's a soda brand um, that is uh, local to Michigan, mm-hmm. and they, they have this famous pop called Rock and Rye, mm-hmm. um, and it's like kind of like dark red. I don't really know what flavor it is, to be honest. I know they... I don't even know if rye is in it. I don't know. Do you know what flavor rock and rye is? <laughs> I but it's, have no idea. It's, it's, it's kind of like a, che- it's almost like a Dr. Pepper where like there's yeah, multiple flavors in there. You just don't yeah, know which it's one It's kind of like a cherry and or dark berries yeah. and spices type of beer. And they made a beer that I swear to God tasted precisely like rock and rye. And it even looked like it. You know, it had that deep red color with the kind of pink foam on oh, top really? of it. Wow. It was really cool. And that is by far the neatest. Like, the, the just like absolutely nailed it version of a kind of a food beer mm-hmm. that that totally evokes the the non beer thing it was trying to I, emulate. I do remember them doing that because I didn't get a chance to try them, but I know they were working with a bunch of actual breweries in the area doing all their sodas. So like they had red pop, they had orange, they had like all the different flavors that they do. Oh, okay. From That's different breweries. I do remember that. Okay. So well, you got listener feedback. I do have some listener feedback and thank you. For helping me remember. I know, right? I always forget. Starting this new season right. Um, so we are going to start uh, with a comment from uh, one of our, our favorites, Celeste. Thanks again, as always, for the comment, <laughs> Celeste. And Celeste says, do you think pairing certain beers with certain beers makes a difference? Or is that purely personal preference? So I would probably take this to mean in, in a night where you're having kind of multiple, multiple rounds. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, is is there a role for kind of making a multi-course meal out of pairing certain beers together or or not? I just drink whatever's in front of me, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know, I know, like, Mal, my savage. wife. savage. <laughs> with, with liquor, it's a little different. I know because, like, 
vodka to whiskey are like very, very different. And sometimes they don't mix very well in your, in your stomach. For me, beer is beer is beer. So I'm just yeah. going to drink nitro. I'm going to drink a flavor. I can drink a, a PBR. It doesn't matter. It's just going to yeah. be there. What about you? I would say, so I agree that it is definitely personal preference. Mm-hmm. And the fact that I have a very different answer from you here, I think illustrates that. But Obviously. to me, it does make a difference. Uh, like if I know... Uh, so I, I will usually tend to kind of start. Okay. Two answers. <laughs> I can never just give one. No, if I'm doing like a sampler at a craft brewery, I think order matters a lot. Cause I'm always going to drink from like a lighter flavored beer to a hoppier, stronger flavored beer, just okay. to not wash my palate out. Cause mm-hmm. once you drink like some kind of double IPA, it's, it's hard to <laughs> it's even there forever. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's just kind of sticks in your mouth, but I will say that, yeah, I will often kind of plan on having like one or two really interesting, maybe slightly higher ABV beers at the beginning of a night. Mm -hmm. And then I like to kind of transition to something a little bit lighter and easier after that, just for for sake of pacing. Mm -hmm. And just because, I don't know, I, I just, in my head, it makes sense where it's, you know, you kind of start you're just hanging out with somebody you celebrate with sort of a special beer yeah. and then you move on to something else. Well, as, as far as like whether flavors complement each other, I'm sure for some people they do. For me, usually I just like a kind of variety. Well, the only other thing I probably add to that is when, um, when I um, do decide to drink a lot of beers at night, um, I do tend to drink something more flavorful at the beginning. And then Towards the end, when I'm no longer able to feel my tongue and feel different taste, um, I switch to cheaper beers because I'm, I'm not going to appreciate right. the flavors anymore at that yeah. point. Yeah. So we're kind of on the same page yeah. there. So we'll do uh, one more. This yeah. is this is a quick one. Uh, uh, this is a comment on uh, on Apple Podcast. It looks like from Pete Knoll. Uh, so thanks for commenting, Pete. It says, awesome. I've been brewing for years, going electric soon. Just bought an Anvil Foundry 10.5 and looking forward to my first brew with it soon. Cheers, clink emoji. <laughs> so, I actually, I've seen the electric ones at a brew store and I'm, I'm I'm always contemplating it. I, Pete, I'm very jealous of you. I, I would really <laughs> like, it's, it's neat brewing with propane, but especially like having young kids and like having them running around while we're brewing and, and like a dumb idiot dog. <laughs> um, Love you, Layla. Yeah, I... I would love to go electric. It's just expensive. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, like it looks really cool. I, I love like how programmable everything is. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, Pete, if if you watch this episode and hear this comment, we would love for you to follow up with another comment on your experience with Yeah, the, let us know how it is. If it's, if it's definitely worth it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'd just love to hear how, how you are enjoying it because it's definitely something I've been thinking about diving into. Yeah. All right, so, All right, so with, with that, with that, um, let's begin the main topic. So, um, we are discussing your beer titled "The Dude," um, and in the stinger, we we mentioned that it is based off your your wife's favorite Starbucks recipe. So, to begin, why don't you just introduce the beer? Why why did you decide to make this as a beer, and how did you come up with the name? So, the reason I came up with this beer, the the base of it was um, a beer that we have here. It's called Bean Flicker. It is a just a, a typical coffee ale, blonde ale. Um, nothing really fancy about it. It's really good. I love it. I think we talked about it actually on the beach episode. I think where it's, it's like I think it's, it's one of nice, those like drinking go kart beer. beers yeah. for yeah. this podcast. We both really love that yeah. beer. Um, so I decided to build off it a little bit, and so I took an idea and ran with it. So as we mentioned, my wife's coffee is based off this her drink uh choice from starbucks and it was a white chocolate frappuccino with coconut milk because at the time uh lactose intolerant so she was doing coconut milk um and i tasted it it tastes good it was really good flavor and i'm like i could make that into something <laughs> and so i decided to put it in this one you know um, what would make this better hmm. alcohol alcohol <laughs> it always does um the name of the beer um for those who don't know who the dude is the dude is the Dudorino, the dudeness. Um, I forgot the rest of the lines that he used. In Sometimes there. there's a man for his time and place. Yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> Sometimes um, it, there's a man. It's off uh, the Big Lebowski. Um, and the reason I did it, it, it isn't like 
super reminiscent of it, but I do get a kind of a white Russian feel with this beer. I can that see That creaminess it. Yeah. and everything else with it. So that's why I named it The Dude. So that's yes. it. That's the story. And also, <laughs> just because every time we drink it, it's a great opportunity to throw out some Lebowski quotes. I mean, yes. And what's better? All right. Well, so cool. So you decide to make this beer. It, it sounds like I'm, I'm correct in... If I followed you, you, you basically, you started from, I want to brew a light coffee ale. Yes. And then you said, okay, how can I make this unique? I know I, here's this coffee drink I really like mm-hmm. the, you know, how could I turn this into, into a beer recipe? Yeah. So, there wasn't, there wasn't anything I saw. Cause you know, I, I like to find something that has been done and do it because why not? Um, but I wanted I thought the flavor profile would be great. I think uh, these flavor profiles in a stout, a coffee stout, would be perfect. So they uh, would be. So I wanted to do. I think I've actually seen them in a stout. So I wanted to move it into a, a blonde ale instead, and it turned out awesome. I mean, I've, I've done this probably about three or four times at this point. You know, you say that now, I'd be really interested to taste the stout version of this beer. I mean, we can maybe try that one maybe time. Maybe we should do that. But. <laughs> okay, so so now let, let's move on to the actual brewing process. So yeah. can you discuss a little bit the the um just sort of yeah, the the, the style, your your ingredient choices, mm-hmm. however much you want to disclose about this I, sure, I have no, yeah, top I have. secret recipe. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about how, how you put the recipe together, what you were thinking, and what ingredients you used. Uh, I, yeah, so I pretty much I, I started with the clone of Bean Flicker. I did not, excuse me, I did not change much of it because if, if it isn't broken, why fix it? Um, so the the grain build, I started with a, a nice Pilsner um, extract, um, which is a pretty light extract. Um, and then on top of that base, I added um, about a half pound of carapils, um, which is generally used... Um, for to add head retention um, to light lagers, it's not really for highly hopped yeah. things, um, and it's not super. It's generally presumed to be not very flavorful. Yeah, right? it's very light kiln, very it's more, light yeah. flavor, and everything it's, it's else. It's more just like yeah, it adds body and mm-hmm. head retention. And then I did about a half pounds of crystal ten degrees, um, which is very light in color as well. Um, gives it a little bit of actual flavor yeah, on top of that, a so you have a little, yep. yeah. Um, so that was my grain build. Um, once I did that, I went to my hops. Um, I did a half ounce of Fugel right at the beginning. Um, I did an ounce of Fugel with 20 minutes left. Um, and then I did a Whirl Flock tab at the last 10 minutes, which- okay, Just to help clear it. Clears, like, oh my, it clears it perfectly. I used to use Irish it's Moss in, it, and now I found Whirl, these tabs. Really? I'm like, so much better. Okay, interesting. Cause I, I use Irish Moss and I think Irish Moss, Irish Moss has always worked great for me too, but I've never tried Whirl Flock. It's- what I, from what I heard, the world lock is pretty much like Irish moss compounded like times 9,000. Right. It's over 9,000. Yeah. So it's like whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, and then with okay. the, with the hops, the, the Fugo hops, I like, um, it gives it kind of a, a woody and earthy feel to it. Um, yeah. and not overpowering bitterness, um, which yeah. is what I wanted. Pretty with mild. I, I really like Fugles and I think that that kind of earthy, Thing is a really nice choice here to kind of complement the coffee flavor. Mm-hmm. No greed. Um, yeast is just a simple California ale from White Labs. Nothing fancy about yeah. it. Um, and then the secondary is where everything comes in. So I do an ounce of white chocolate nibs, little melting chocolate nibs that you can buy at store. Um, and then, sorry, this is an ounce in a three gallon batch. This is five gallon batch. Five gallon. I, I I usually do three or four gallon, but I, I to make it simple for everybody, I'm just saying this is all for five gallon batch. Ryan knows everybody. Likes the dude, Ryan abides. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I so have one ounce of the white chocolate nibs, two ounce of a light roast coffee, which I use Starbucks. Um, I forgot what it's called, but they have the light roast, which is really They're good. blonde. Yeah. That is my favorite of their like, it is, yeah, mine too. coffees. Uh, and then I do a pound of toasted coconut. So I actually toast the coconut myself. I buy like unsweetened cool. coconut. Like uh, shredded. pre-shaved. Yep. Yeah, okay. And then toast it and then put it all in. Oh, um, man. So this and, is that, you, and that always sits. I usually let stuff like when the secondary sit for a week or two, four days. Okay. That's it. Because that the, the flavor will be too much. Yeah. And sorry. So what, what, so you use, you didn't pour ounces of Starbucks coffee and that's ounces of what, beans. whole beans? Whole beans. Yeah. Whole beans, yep. but of the Starbucks blonde roast. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's even better. You know, I actually, I've had um, some like 
home like brewed Starbucks coffee with their beans and it's so much better than buying it at Starbucks because <laughs> they just their coffee's so strong it and kind of burnt tea yeah especially Pike but yeah so, all right cool yeah so, I really like their blonde beans yeah so going off that um with that build I have an app on my phone that when you put the recipe in it it kind of gives you your, your gravity readings and everything else when I put this all in there my measurements came up with the gravities and the ABV came out at less than 2%. No joke, Oops. less than 2%. <laughs> but I went with it. I got my own original gravity reading and that came up to be, uh, I don't remember what the what the final um, was or what the original was supposed to be, but my original gravity came out about 1.04. And then my final gravity came out to be 1.01, which puts me at a, just at 4%, which is Right where I wanted it to be at four okay. or five percent. Yeah, that's solid. Yeah, um, IBUs is is tip, is actually pretty low. It's about twenty five um, on the scale yeah, of one hundred. Yeah. With an ABV that low, yeah. that makes sense. You you wouldn't mm-hmm. want to go a lot higher than that. And then the SRM, which is the color, is three. Okay, so, so it's so pretty light. Super like I think it's like um, like, like just almost a, just above straw, basically. <laughs> yes. Right? It's like it, it's like barely gold enough to be called gold. just above <laughs> transparent. Yeah, and it's it's <laughs> so funny. It's, perfect. it's funny actually because you know I I have uh, you know we'll be we'll be uh, talking taste in the latter half of the show, but I've had this beer before. This is not the the first time Ryan has made it. We just haven't haven't had time to squeeze a show in about it yet, mm-hmm. uh, and it's. It's not you. You might be tricked into thinking that like you add coffee to it. Doesn't that make it dark? Coffee's dark. No, no. actually, it's really surprising how little color coffee adds to. Well, a I beer. think if you had it ground, I think you'll get some more color out of it because Maybe. I think it'll seep out a little more. But as a whole bean that's not cracked yeah. or anything, I think the colors will stay I've, within. Yeah, but like I've, I've had a lager that was made by Wolverine Brewing that had cold brew added to it, like okay. actual liquid coffee, and it just. I think you add little enough that it just doesn't make a difference. Or you add enough grains of the lighter color that kind of bring it back to a lighter color in itself. So if you like with this one, like I was saying with yeah, the grain bill, it's, pr- it's very enough. light. You dilute it enough, yeah, to be a lighter yeah, color. That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, uh, did you have anything else? Any other stats you wanted to discuss? Because you're making me thirsty. I I, I make myself thirsty. Um, so no, I think that's it. Um, so we're gonna take a quick break. We'll hear from a few other podcasts, a few friends, a few friends, um, and we'll be back. And we can't cheers because we haven't got our beers yet. But cheers, clink, bye, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, have you ever been looking for a definitive Nintendo ranking and can't seem to find it because it's just everybody's own opinion? Honestly, all the time, Sam. Well, I'm looking for someone to give us the answers. Wait, you mean like a podcast made by two young, handsome men where they create a definitive top five list of all things Nintendo? Should we just do it ourselves? Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Let's give it a shot. I'm Sam. And I'm Jake. And at Top 5 Nintendo, I'm going to give you my Top 5 list. And I'm going to give you my Top 5 list. And then we're going to duke it out and see what the real Top 5 is. And we are back. And now we can cheers properly. Here. Cheers. So, um, so this is the beer. You've, you've had it before. You, I think you just took a sip. No, you I have said. not yet. I took a sniff. Took a sniff. Um, I'm going to let you kind of... I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit, and I'll let you take okay. a sip. So I'll say it, despite the 3 SRM, um, it, it is a nice gold color. Like, it's not... Mm-hmm. It's You know, if you have, like, a Berliner Weiss or something, it'll be, like, literally barely yellow. Yeah. Um, this is... This looks like a beer. Well, I will say the color came from the app. The app kind of saw what was there and, yeah, and built that's, the color that's in itself. True. So um, same and, thing with IBUs. I, I don't have time to actually distinguish the IBUs. But, um, <laughs> well, yeah, you, you would you would need to send it into a lab or something yeah. for an actual IBU. No, too much work. But, um, uh, so on the nose, it's it's funny. Like, I didn't pick out... Uh, the first time I had this beer, I really liked it. And I knew there was coffee in it. I didn't, I couldn't distinctly pick out the other flavors separate because they blend together really nicely into this just like kind of composite experience, this kind of gestalt. And Mm -hmm. you definitely get that on the nose. You can, there's a little bit of 
light beer and definitely coffee. And if you've ever had a coffee beer, it has that smell, but knowing there's white chocolate and coconut in there, mm-hmm. I can get that too, but I wouldn't have distinguished them on my own. Yeah. Yeah. So on the sip, um, a real nice, I mean, really, really easy drinking. Mm-hmm. Um, you That's know, it's it nice that it's 4% because it, it kind of tends to disappear. From, from <laughs> say, and yeah. it's half gone around. I would say, yeah, the, the, <laughs> the, the coffee flavor is, I think, muted and it's there, but it's muted enough that I would say that, like, I would let somebody even who doesn't like coffee try this. Yeah. Haley w- would be picky and she'd pick it out because she, she, she can taste <laughs> coffee and everything, but... um. But yeah, if you're not like super, super sensitive to it, I bet you could enjoy this beer just because again, it's the, the coffee sort of feeds into this nice composite flavor. Um, I might want to actually add a little more coffee beans to it. You you think you would want a little bit more? I think I want a little more in there because I I have grown to like coffee over the years. So I might, because again, for five gallon batch, I only put in like two ounces and not much. And I mean that, that can go a long way for sure but yeah i mean i i wouldn't be upset about more coffee flavor in this but i also don't mind it as it is um there's also on the finish there's almost like a tart slight yeah i'm getting that fresh tart thing i think it it reminds me this is gonna i don't i'm worried this is gonna sound like a pejorative i really like this but it, it almost reminds me of like coconut water which i know you don't like but Coconut water, similarly, it's a bit more insipid with coconut mm-hmm. water, but there's this kind of like coconut tart thing. You okay. know, it's like yeah. you don't normally associate coconut with being a tart fruit, but it is a fruit and it has a little bit of that yeah. acidity. Um, and and I kind of get that and, and in, in, a, in a really pleasant way. Like mm-hmm. I said, all kind of the best things about coconut water. Um, but I love when beers finish with a tart little finish, mm-hmm. just, just a lightly tart finish like that, because it just makes you want the next sip right yeah, away. No agreed. It's, it's really, really pleasant. So no agreed. I think that is my kind of, that's my full Mike Newton review of the <laughs> dude. Why don't you talk a little bit about kind of how, how does this batch measure up with sort of your idea of how this beer is supposed to taste? So it's, like I said, I think the tartness is a little strong, which is why I kind of want a little more coffee in there to get. Okay. So you, you don't love that. I, I do like it. It's a nice, it's, it's a little too much, but I like yeah. it still. Um, yeah. you, you like it being there, but it's out of balance. Yeah. Okay. I think, honestly, I think adding a little more of the white chocolate and the coffee will balance that out. The sweetness might balance out a little more. So yeah. I think I might up so that maybe a, just little a little bit. Too maybe coconutty. do. Maybe do um, three ounces of white chocolate and five ounces of the coffee. Like it's not much of, a, of an increase, yeah. but a little bit. Yeah. Because it is, it's a pound of toasted coconut, which it doesn't seem like a lot, but like it's coconut. So it doesn't have weight to it. So like it, I mean, I, I did it's three, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> three baking, baking sheets of coconut toasted in the oven. Do you, do you like take like a couple flakes out and eat them? Because they sound really yummy. Freshly toasted yes. coconut. Yes. Are they good? They're so good. I love, I, I hate fake coconut. Like when you get like a mounds bar or something like that, Yeah. but real coconut, like, like coming right out of a coconut or even yeah. like something like that where it's toasted. It's so good. Yeah. See, I love coconut in basically all its forms. <laughs> I don't know about mounds, but I love me an almond joy. Yeah. Oh, well, mounds is pretty much the same thing without almonds. Let's just be honest here. Is it? Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I like really, I don't know if I've had one. I don't know if I've had one. Okay. So yeah. So you, you, you would probably not touch your grain bill. I, well, or, or I, we, we did talk about this, I think on misadventures where I made this beer and I, when I put it in the app, I saw that my, my ABV came out so low. So I upped the grain build. And then when I made it, it was sickly sweet because of all the mm. grains and I forgot to put extra hops in to kind of balance it out. Oops. <laughs> yeah, oops. But now after redoing it and actually getting my gravity readings and everything else and coming out the right ABV, I wanted to be at. I don't want to touch it. The grain build. The grain build's good. Yeah. I, um, I really like it. it it's yeah. not, and I mean, it's it's made to too. be, you know, like light, light beer, Blondale to begin with, doesn't have a whole lot of complexity. It's meant to be crisp and fairly simple. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I sort of like, this is the thing that I love about coffee Blondale. I like coffee stout and whatever dark coffee beers are yummy too, but mm-hmm. I like that the beer provides a backbone and then it kind of just gets out of the way. Yep. And then like, it allows you to appreciate those other flavors and it allows the beer to have some flavor complexity, but remain like crisp. Now, 
Let me ask you this, as you explain what you like about these beers with coffee. How would you make this? If, if I if were you to, had make, to make a coffee, a coffee ale, you know, I, I would like to, at some point make a coffee blonde ale. And the one, honestly, part of it is that I, I, we tend to try and brew beers that Haley actually likes. <laughs> so <laughs> and she won't so like pouring a bunch of coffee into it is like a great way to make her be like, yeah, I mean, that's fine. We can do that. I'm not going to have any. <laughs> I can see her being like, yeah, yeah, we can do that, but we, you're going to drink it by yourself. We already do that about the IPA where it's like, <laughs> well, I make one IPA a year. That is all my beers I make. Even even this one based off her coffee recipe at the time, she's still just like, no, this yeah, is- it's good, but I'm going to have Stroh's instead. I'm like, really? Stroh's yeah. is good, but come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I would probably start similarly. Like I would also use, I consider, I, I've had a decent range of like coffee beers and Bean Flicker to me is just by far the best. And I think based on their description, they may also add some other things to it well i know that they, they started doing variations of it i've i've oh, seen really? a couple i can't remember what they were but i've seen a couple of variations i think with um like with, maybe with chocolate like a dark yeah. chocolate i think is what they did yeah. a dark chocolate bean flicker okay so yeah that, that could be on me but yeah so yeah i i am a i'm a black coffee drinker Same. um so i don't know if i would particularly because i have access to the dude I would probably <laughs> play it straight and I would start by just trying to make a, just a light coffee, um, just like just coffee added mm-hmm. with no other flavors and see how I like that. And then just, just kind of see how that works because that would sort of, that would be based on my ideal cup of coffee. But one thing I, I thought I would love to play around with is, you know, there are so many different types of like bean you know there's light Mm -hmm. versus dark roast but also um i'm gonna be a coffee nerd for a second like country of (laughs) origin makes such a huge difference yeah um no Haley got me this subscription like every month i get a pack of the i think it's out of austin um it's called atlas um is the name of the company i would highly recommend it's like they send you one it's like just enough for me to make coffee every morning for most of a month and they yeah. send one every four weeks okay and it's always it's fresh roasted they roast it pack it and send it to you nice. so they're like super fresh yeah um and it's always from a different source country and mm-hmm. it is incredible how different they taste year to year like or mm-hmm. month to month like if you get one from like ethiopia which is kind of the the cradle of of coffee that's i think where most coffee traces its lineage yeah, from yeah it's it's this really fruity almost like blueberry i remember you telling me notes, about that yeah no it's yeah. like notes it's still, yeah. it still tastes mostly like coffee but but it, it really does have these kind of fruity like i got a distinctly blueberry flavor out of that one okay right now my current one is from india and it has way more of kind of like uh it's darker flavor something more like chocolate with maybe some spices in it mm-hmm. um and uh so it'd be interesting. I wonder how that would come through in a beer if there's too much else going on. But I'd love to try some uh, some like Ethiopian mm-hmm. coffee grounds uh, roast. I'd have to do some research, but roasted to whatever is going to bring that fruity quality out the yeah. most. And then just see whether that comes through in the final beer and make a real simple blonde ale, maybe even a lager for that. Mm-hmm. Probably a blonde ale. Yeah. With, with just like you did a super clean, simple yeast. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, I'd probably steal the Fugles idea. Yeah. Uh, if anything, maybe I would try and, you know, use some hops that are going to accent that kind of berry quality yeah. if I was going to do anything else. No, I just I actually just thought about this off the top of my head. One thing I know you, we both drink our coffees black, but Starbucks does do a, um, cold brew with a vanilla cream that I usually like yeah. devour. It's really, really good. Um, Starbucks pre sponsor this episode, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, what if you put lactose? To give it a kind of cre- like a creaminess and everything. Um, I know you're. I know you drink black, but like. So I would say, I I personally would hate that forever. <laughs> so I I do not like lactose in ninety eight percent of beers. I I, really? I think it's gross. Yeah, I I just I the short and stout. I know. So that's the that's the two percent. Well, okay, okay um, maybe not. Two percent. I'll say like I like milk stouts. Okay. I have never had a light beer with lactose in it that I 
either I, I would either out of politeness force myself to finish the glass or I would just not finish it and order another beer. Like I really, <laughs> really hate it. It's one I, of my I, this is a thought. It's I, one of my very least favorite things. Like that lactose was the sweetener that that was how they may remember that uh eggnog oh, I, eggnog oh, yeah. IPA. Oh. That was bad. That's the worst example, but I've also I've also had other ones. So I would not do that mm-hmm. personally. Okay. Uh, this is a thought. And in a stout, I think it can work nicely. Yeah. And 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 with a real light touch. But but yeah, that wouldn't be my move. I, I like all my coffee drinks to be bitter. The one thing that I might play around with is I'm a sucker for this is off the cup, but I'm a sucker for dirty chai latte. Ooh, so do a-, a dirty chai. So that might be one where I would use lactose but th- i would make this one that would be a dark beer with some some mm-hmm. chai spices yeah. and or like actual chai tea in it and then mm-hmm. also some coffee because for those not in the know a dirty chai latte is just a chai latte with a shot of espresso in it mm-hmm. and oh man if i want to like treat myself at starbucks <laughs> that is my treat starbucks order is is a dirty chai latte all right and it's all right. also really fun um Steve, uh, my, my friend Steve turned me on to the idea of just like making that the thing you're like, if you're traveling somewhere, make a point to like find a small, like family run coffee house Mm -hmm. that sells one and just order theirs because apparently there's like a ton of variety. And I just Mm -hmm. tried one in downtown Northville, I think at like a small little dinky establishment yeah. and and it was it was super good i really liked the starbucks one but it was totally different from theirs it had uh like just way more i think cardamom in it okay so it was like the spice blend was different well also the and, vanilla and it was like, really really interesting i know people put like because mal we used to work at a coffee shop i think actually both mal and haley yeah. did for a long a long time ago and they had one i forgot i think they called it a chicycle in which it's a chai it's a chai latte but you put x pumps of vanilla i think it's five and it's like, oh, but I'll it's take it's, one, <laughs> it's, it's, but it sweetens it up and freshens yeah. it for yeah. a lo- it's, it's an ice version. You can't do that in a hot one. You do. It oh, ice well, version. okay. That's that, yeah. that, that, that would be a little better. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, I, I will say for the record, I might add lactose to that because I've tried actually just getting a latte, mm-hmm. like a coffee latte, a cafe yeah. latte with a pump of the chai Starbucks chai syrup mm-hmm. or whatever in it. And it is not as good because it the chai stuff needs a bit of sweetness yeah. to like really shine. Mm-hmm. So I think that might be a beer that did want to be a little sweeter. I might have to write that down, dude. A chai latte beer. So let's let's go. yeah. <laughs> That's for uh, later. Honestly, episode. <laughs> I, I would love to see you take a crack at that. Or if I do, yeah, we'll have to do a follow up episode about yeah. it. But <laughs> well, bouncing off of that and and uh, kind of returning to what I had asked you earlier, if you were to alter this recipe into a stout recipe obviously you'd add some roasted grains to it Mm -hmm. to make it a stout to make it dark but like what what would your approach be would you make any other changes to the balance or how do you think you'd do that if you wanted to make like a a a stout dude if i wanted to make a stout dude which it would be like a black russian technically in this one um instead of a white russian um what i would probably do is I would definitely do a little more roasted grain. The hops would probably stay um, the same. And and honestly, in this one, I would probably change the white chocolate to a dark chocolate. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes. Oh, and boy, the that final, sounds delicious. And then the final step is nitronize. Like that, I would have to nitronize that one for sure. I want to nitro this one. I bet it would be delicious. I think it would be too. I mean, yeah, you you have that. Uh, you you can do it in your little um, or your carbonated growler. If I right? just get a syringe like we did in Brewers Myth Boosters. Oh, that's true. Oh, I don't have any shoot, syringes. Man, I should I have brought one with me. We could have uh, we could have done can, it I'll on pick, there. I'll pick something up at Meyer next. What if you there? just like here, just hold a straw and just go <laughs> and just like blow into it really hard? Back Maybe that would work. Yeah. <laughs> what is your beer? I yeah. know. <laughs> But, um, You're right. But yeah, no, I, I think I might try that. Maybe yeah, when I go shopping I would love again, to try this on nitro. Yeah. Haley and I just tried making a blonde ale on nitro, and it, it is, it's 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 been interesting. I don't think we quite nailed the recipe. It's kind of challenging to write a good blonde ale recipe for nitro because it's not just writing a good blonde ale recipe. Yeah. Uh, we hopped it a bit too much, and that was weird. Mm-hmm. It's getting better as the hops fade. Yeah. Um, you know, since it's settled a little bit because mm-hmm. they're just really sharp, like right off the bat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would love to, the dude is not 
a hoppy beer, even carbonated, mm-hmm. and um, and uh, the nitrogen, the kind of flattening effect that nitrogen has mutes hop flavor anyway. So I think this would be incredible on nitrogen. No, I think so too. I think that that is probably I would if I wanted to adventure into this beer, I would nitrogenize this one. Maybe add a little more of the white chocolate and uh, the light roast coffee. Yeah. Um, if I did want to do more of a stout version of this, um, I would probably. I would, honestly, what I would probably do is I would take the crystal and just up it to a, a darker color. You wouldn't use any like roasted barley or anything. I don't think so. I think I think it will add too much of a As different a flavor. As a fan of Guinness, I know. How I dare know. you not add roasted barley <laughs> but see, to your but stout? Guinness is, Guinness is the flavor. I also want the flavors of the coffee and the chocolate and yeah. the coconut to come through. You could use something like uh, like a midnight wheat or like uh, there's one that Breeze makes. It's called Black Prince. Um, or honestly, like I those probably... are those are like super dark, but they're supposed to be about as light in in roasted flavor as it's possible to get while still mm-hmm. making the beer dark. Because I would just be nervous. You'd have to add a metric, you know, <laughs> well, ton of thing. crystal. Mold. I would take out the Pilsen LME and make it a dark LME instead. And oh, then well, but add, so that yeah. has roasted malt it does, as yeah, part of that it. does have it, yeah. Okay, so yeah, you wouldn't steep any roasted grains, but you just use a dark I would extract. probably, yeah, I'll use well, a darker extract. Sense. And actually, yeah, probably up the crystal to maybe like a 50 or 60. And yeah. then crystal leave. 60 is my boy. Yeah, no. and then <laughs> I, I probably lots of beers. I probably actually would get rid of the carapils and just do a pound of the crystal. Well, yeah, because if you have dark grains, you don't really, the dark grains will give you head retention. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you don't need that yep. anymore. And then, like I said, I think the hops will stay the same. I get rid of the world flock tab because don't need it anymore at this point because you want a dark beer. Yeah. Well, unless you want a clean. I might keep it. I like there. my dark beers. Yeah. Guinness is a crystal clear beer. That's true. It is. Cross off your Guinness <laughs> bingo card. We've talked about Guinness on this episode. Okay. Twice now, actually. Yeah. All right. So if this, yeah, I'll say, if this all sounds some. really good to the listener and the listener says, oh boy, I want me a coffee blonde ale. Um, I know we did a couple here local, but like yeah. So I was going to say, I, I think Bean Flicker is probably both of our favorites in the Michigan yes. area. What have you had any others that you've really liked? <sighs> I mean, <laughs> the only other coffee blonde thing, like I mean, it's not even a blonde. It's just actually it's just hard coffee. Is PBRs hard nitro coffee or hard co- hard cold, hard cold, cold brew? That's yeah. pretty yummy. It is though. very yummy, but I think it's actually just coffee that they just added. Alcohol too, and, and doesn't uh, Guinness make one Guinness of those? Or Guinness makes like a half and half. No, it? it's it's just coffee. it's just cold brew coffee. Yeah, cold oh, brew interesting. Coffee. Yeah. Okay, I didn't realize. And then that. they put some of their they do put a little bit of the flavor profile in it. But yeah. gotcha. Okay, so but again, this is all yeah, not real, co- not really a coffee ale, blonde ale or something like that. Yeah, just but, cold but, coffee. But but coffees. if you like the idea of at least a hard coffee flavored beer, that's yeah. that's and those you can find anywhere. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I would also say I had one. Uh, well, so very local Griffin Claw Brewing in. Um, oh yeah, they did just do they, one. They did a coffee Kolsch. Oh co- yeah, it's called coffee Kolsch Lager, which mm-hmm. is a bit confusing because it is. I don't know. Well, you what technically a you lager Kolsch Lager. Kolsch. Yeah, that's true. I guess yeah, yeah. It's an ale yeast, but then you lager it. Mm-hmm. So okay, fair, fair point. That's very good. <laughs> um, and also um, uh, Wolverine Brewing, uh, they have a uh, coffee lager a cold brew lager that's yeah. the one i was talking about where they they advertise that they i think add like actual liquid cold brew to it yeah and that one is very good too and a lager is an, another kind of interesting spin on the coffee blonde because it just gives it that different finish that yeah. like ultra crisp finish so um in what addition to that, nationally what's, so what's, yeah so so uh, i looked up some i guess i i so obviously if you just want a coffee beer you have options like Founders Breakfast Stout. Uh, one, Lagunitas yeah. makes one called Cappuccino Stout. Mm. Ale Smith Speedway Stout. Okay. Um, I, I I found this on a uh, an article on Daily Coffee News, which is a place I've never heard of, and now I want to see what else <laughs> they write. So there are some others. Um, Sun King, which I believe is Phoenix. No, no it's in, uh, Indianapolis. Indianapolis, yeah. uh, Indianapolis. Sorry, and and Sun King is great if you live in Indianapolis area. I loved that place. Yeah, they make they one called Java Mac. Rogue Brewing, who is fairly easy to find nationwide. Yeah, they're, they're easy to find. They're makes West Coast, a, I think. 
makes makes a cold brew IPA, which Ooh, sounds really interesting. That does sound good. Um, I'd be really curious about that. I feel yeah. like that's one you could do very wrong. <laughs> yeah, I think you had to have but the right balance. I would probably. I don't know if I would venture I would, there. I would trust them to have the pedigree to get it yes. right, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't try that. <laughs> a Cascade Lakes Blonde Coffee Stout. Okay. Um, so usually a blonde stout means that they add some chocolate and other like other things that don't like. I think it's mostly chocolate and coffee Mm -hmm. and then some lactose till, or no, maybe not like necessarily lactose, but like they add stoutish flavors from Mm -hmm. non-stout things. So it's probably not too far off the dude. Yeah. Um, Like something along those lines. So that Cascade Lakes Blonde Coffee Stout could be a really great option if the dude sounds very good to you and you don't feel like just cribbing Ryan's recipe. If you do, shout him out in the comments. I was about to say, yeah. I, um, I have no shame. Like, if you want to copy my recipe, uh, go right I ahead. think it's great, yeah. Uh, Old Forge Brewing Co's Coffee Kolsch. Three Daughters Awake Coffee Blonde Ale. Those are some of the other ones. Um, and the Bay City Coffee Blonde Ale. So I presume that it's San Francisco area. So Yeah, a lot of West Coast because the Cascade Lake one, it's in Oregon. Is it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I mean, but up. there's just a lot of beer that's made over I there. I mean, West Coast, <laughs> this always makes those, makes those beers. Yeah. But so, yeah. So you've got some options. Also, if you just go to a decent uh, liquor store or a, like a grocery store with a decent beer selection, you'll probably find one. Like these are kind of becoming more popular. So yeah. I, I was, I think I actually, just when we try looking, your local, try your local one. I'm sure you can find one that a local craft agreed. brewery makes. Yeah. I was going to say, I think that I looked at the same article you're looking at right now. And saw that it was it, it even says in the title like it's a it's a new thing that's just it's so hot right now so hot. Yeah. <laughs> You're quoting the wrong a, movie now. There's got to be a uh, an analogous Lebowski quote for that, but I can't think of one. Um, okay, well, yeah. So so there it is. And for the record, I think Ryan and I, if you can get it, odd side ales, bean flicker is probably what Ryan and I would endorse as our yes, favorite. One hundred percent endorse. One hundred percent of the podcasters presently in this basement agree. Yes, that that is that's it's a, a good great place to start. Yes. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. So I think that that's. That's the dude. I think that's a that's a good beer. I think it's a good, is good episode. Dude. Sometimes there's a beer. Sometimes there's a beer. <laughs> All right. If you would like to find me on social media, contact the podcast. At, <laughs> Where do you find podcasts? At Bruthers in Law on Twitter. That's all one word. B-R-E-W-T-H-E-R-S mm-hmm. in law. It's spelled normally. Um, <laughs> you can also uh, find more information about the podcast and contact info on our website at brothersinlaw.com. And in mm-hmm. addition, uh, Ryan, where else can people find you? So personally, I'm on Twitter at Rambo Coon, all one word. Um, and anything that's brewing related, um, it's Wise Old Owls Brew. I am also, as I stated before, made it into the TikTok world. Um, and my handle <laughs> on there is also Wise Old Owls Brew. Um, a lot of quick videos of me brewing the beers and everything else. Actually, there's a quite a bit of the dude being brewed on there from, from start to finish, actually, from when I did the initial brew to the re-racks to the uh, carbonating to the first pour, all in there. See all the steps as they come through. That is exciting. I know you look so excited. <laughs> you can send me links. I can watch TikToks despite not having one. <laughs> and of course, uh, you can find us at our website. I, th- I don't think you said website, did you? Yes, I did. Oh, you did? Okay. I, I didn't did. hear that part. I How dare- this aggression will not stand. <laughs> Snuck on uh, right. <laughs> So if you have any comments about the beer, if you have any comments about uh, coffee blonde ales or even just coffee if you would just general. like to comment on this episode's post with your favorite quote from the big lebowski that would you be can great. do that too please do do a gif i don't care i, I love the movie we need to do the lebowski night one of these days we do um we should do it while you still have some of this we could have one of these to kick it off and then switch white russians. russians yeah, yeah um, that's a glorious idea and of course go and rate us on apple, apple podcast, podcast google podcast youtube um, anywhere oh, you YouTube. listen to yeah. um, you your like. podcasts um, helps the algorithms so we can get out and more people can find us. Um, but I think that's it for this episode. I, behind the curtain, we have a few more to do, but we're gonna, we're, we're pacing ourselves. We record them in batches. But until the next time you hear our voices, cheers and abide. Abide. <laughs>